Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Glorieta Pass, located in Santa Fe and San Miguel Counties, New Mexico, on March 26 through the 28, 1862. U.S. Colonel John P. Slough led his 1st Colorado Infantry, along with Major John M. Shivington and additional detachments from the 1st and 3rd U.S. Cavalry Regiments in a defense against the Confederate forces that had been attacking other locations in New Mexico. This Confederate army was led by Major Charles L. Pyron and William Reed Scurry, along with Pyron's battalion of 2nd Texas Mounted Rifles. Major Pyron led 400 men eastward along the Santa Fe Trail towards the opposing Union troops led by Major John Shivington and his 420 men. Pyron's men camped at one end of Glorieta Pass, known as Apache Canyon. Meanwhile, Shivington moved his Union troops west on the same road and attacked Pyron's advance scouts. Shivington, however, had to retreat due to Confederate artillery fire. While he was recovering, Shivington split his forces into two to cover both sides of the pass. This allowed him to catch the Confederate forces in a crossfire. Using this advantage, the Union troops continued climbing the hills bordering the Santa Fe Trail, forcing the Confederates to withdraw back towards Apache Canyon. The Confederates attempted several times to form up a defensive line, but the Union troops continued to keep their flanking advantage and pushed back the Confederates and broke off his attack to return to Kowalski's ranch, the place the Union was using as a base until the Union reinforcements came. Both sides rested the entire day of March 27th and continued the attack on March 28th. By the time the 28th had arrived, the Union forces received another 900 troops, bringing their total up to 1,300 men. The Confederates, likewise, had more reinforcements that brought their number up to 1,100. Union Colonel Slough led his reinforcements and found the original Confederate troops were set up very far forward of the main Confederate force, and he ordered his men to attack at 11 a.m. The location of the attack was just half a mile from a place known as Pigeon's Ranch. He brought four companies from the 1st Colorado, supported by all the Union artillery, and commenced the attack. U.S. Lieutenant Colonel Samuel Tappan led the Union attack himself. In response, the Confederates dismounted and formed a line across the canyon but the terrain caused problems with forming up and it resulted in the units overlapping. Even with this, the Confederates were numerically superior to Tappan's forces and withstood the assault. By 3 p.m., the Confederates were able to outflank the Union's right flank. Their new location, known as thereafter as Sharpshooter's Ridge, laid waste on the Union artillery and infantry below. After a short time, the Union could not hold and retreated back to Kowalski's ranch. During the harsh attack on the Union forces, Shivington had taken his men to a place called Johnson's Ranch. Having been informed by Lieutenant Colonel Manuel Chavez of the 2nd New Mexico Infantry and commander of the New Mexican Volunteers, that Confederate supply train was located there. Shivington ordered his men to attack and drove off the Confederate defenders. They then looted and burned 80 supply wagons, spiked the cannons, and killed an additional 500 Confederate horses to hamstring the effectiveness of the all-cavalry Confederate army. The Confederates were forced to retreat back to Santa Fe and eventually San Antonio due to their supplies being lost. The total losses for the Union include killed, wounded, and captured were 132 men, while the Confederates lost 227 in the same manner. Please join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.